well, thank you and welcome, and I hope you're having a very beautiful day. So if you're new here, my name is Petros, I want to say thank you for stopping by. So in this video, I will discuss the result of sentiment analysis regarding the arrest of Sam Bankman Freed. Um, this video is a follow up to my earlier video on the collapse of FTX. So if you haven't watched the video, I strongly encourage you to go and watch it. Now, Sam Bagman Freed, also known by his initials, SBF, is an American entrepreneur, investor, and former billionaire. So Sam Bagman Freed was the founder and CEO of the cryptocurrency exchange FTX and the cryptocurrency trading firm Alameda Research. Now, to give you context to this video, Sam Bagman Freed successfully started a cryptocurrency exchange platform FTX but things went wrong with the platform. The business collapsed and FTX filed for bankruptcy. The whole saga cost millions or perhaps billions of dollars of customer money to be trapped. At uh, the hope of getting a cent out of uh, the collapsed FTX is close to nothing. Looks like there's no hope. Well, so many people invested their life savings, uh, hoping to get good return on their investments. Uh, but sadly, the whole thing crashed. So for a lot of people, the dream of having a flourishing crypto portfolio, everything is just like a pipe dream now. Now, when Sam Bankman Fried was arrested, so many people took to Twitter, YouTube, and other social media platforms to really vent their anger and frustration concerning this whole saga. So this analysis is based on 30,471 comments harvested from 87 different YouTube channels. So personally, one of the things I like to do after watching a video on YouTube is to read some comments to gauge where the sentiment is heading. So one can only read a few comments. If you read, for example, if you read 10 comments and all are positive, you may prematurely conclude that most are likely to be positive. Most are likely to be positive. And now the dislike button is not there anymore. So you cannot even have an idea where the sentiment is heading. You cannot have an idea. So if you have thousands and thousands of comments to read, you know, that's difficult. Now, some may not be familiar with sent what sentiment analysis is. So very basic, very simple, in a simple way. Sentiment analysis is the process of detecting positive, neutral, or negative sentiment in a text. So an expression can be classified as negative, or positive, or neutral. So say, for example, you went to the store and you bought a watch, and you say, no, I like, I like this watch, so that's positive. No, I don't like this watch, that's negative. I'm not sure if I like this watch. So that's neutral. Now this is a summary of all the comments. So if you look at this chart closely, so we have about 10,388 negative comments, 9,600 neutral comments, and 8,580 8, positive comments. Now, if you look at it very closely, you see that the number of negative comments is very huge, very huge, very huge. So this is not a good outcome. It's not a good outcome. So most of the dealings at FTX and Alameda came to light and the frustration is staggering. FTX was alleged to have used customers found in why it's not appropriate. So the platform was hacked into and a huge sum of money vanished. So can you see why the frustration is growing? You know, people are very frustrated with what, what, what happened at uh, FTX. Now, our point of focus will be these negative comments. We want to see, okay, what we can learn from them. We want to see what they are discussing. So let's go further to see what we can learn from uh, these negative comments. Now, if you look at this chart very closely, so out of 8,568 comments, so we so we have about 32.6%, which are negative, and then extremely negative ones, about 3.8%. So if you have a third of your customers or your fans very frustrated, you know, 
uh, that's very staggering. So this number really calls for us to really look into it. So this is, this is not something that we can just sweep it under the carpet and hope, okay, yeah, things just go away. Um, that's something that we can learn. From. Now this graph shows we have, uh, now this graph shows the distribution of comments over time. So the chart shows we have more comments in December than in November. And why? Because Sam Bankman Fried was arrested in December. So we have more discussion around the topic of his arrest during this period. So if you look at it in each month, the percentage of negative comment is staggering. In each month, there's no shortage of negative comments. There's no shortage. So if people were to keep on writing the comments, you know, things will just only get worse. We will see the number increasing. Now, Bill Gates, he needs no introduction. So one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our time, so he said, and I quote from him, your most unhappy customers are your greatest source of learning. So if you have customers and say, for example, 5% of your customers are not happy, that 5%, you know, you can learn things from them that can really improve your product, that can really uh, give you some kind of chip to make it more money. So you don't just dismiss them, but you learn from them. Now, these people who are frustrated, who are angry, who are bitter, what can we learn from them? What are they really talking about? What's on their mind? Okay, let's go further. Now, this chart shows distribution of subjectivity. Now, when we say something is subjective, what are we talking about? So the quality, so subjectivity is the quality of being based on or influenced by personal feelings, test or opinion. So this is a test of whether something is factual or based on feelings and opinion. So zero is the least and one means completely subjective. If you look at the chart very closely, you can see that huge number of comments have strong objective elements. Now the question we should be asking, what is this telling us? We are dealing with something that is much more serious. We're dealing with things that are much more factual. So this is not just an opinion or feelings. So this is not an avatar movie. There's something much more serious here. Now, this chart or this graph shows distribution of sentiments polarity. Now, polarity refers to the strength of an opinion. So an opinion could be positive, neutral, or negative. So for example, if you look at the chart very closely, so minus 60 is categorized as extremely negative and plus 20 is categorized as highly positive. So the fact that we have extremely negative comments, what does this tell us? Now, these are likely people who have lost money on the platform. You know, so many things went wrong on the platform. So many shady dealings were happening behind the scene and people had no idea, no idea. But now some of the dealings that went on, some of the kind of trading that went on at the platform, now they are being broadcasted at, at rooftops. And the anger is growing. The anger is growing. People are frustrated. People are mad. Now, ask yourself a question. If you have a crypto wallet, how does it feel to have your crypto wallet messed up? How does it feel? Not a good feeling, is it? No. Now, this chart shows the distribution of sentiments how the polarity are distributed. So if you look at the chart very closely, the red portion shows extremely negative comments and the green portion shows extremely positive comments. The amount of negative comments, very, very staggering if you look at it. Now, the question we should be asking, why this amount? If you look at the degree of negativity expressed in the comments as far as minus 60, why? Why this degree? You know, the degree of negativity sort of reflects the anger. It reflects the frustration. It reflects how people are angry. You know, it's, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. Just try to imagine, okay, doing nine to five for years and years, saving money. Now you invested it in crypto. 
and some guys somewhere who had little or no idea about crypto trading just messed up with everything for you. You know, it's not a good thing. It's not. And that's what we are seeing here. Now, if you have customers or you have fans and you know that they are angry, you know they are frustrated, but you don't have an idea what's really driving them to be crazy, you know, that's not going to help you. It's not going to be of help to them and it's not going to be of help to you because why? You can't help the situation. If you don't know anything, you can't help. So the question we should be asking is, what is the root cause of the resentment? People are very resentful, you know, and what is causing this resentment? What are they discussing? Now let's find out. Now this chart shows uh, negative words density. So this chart shows top 30 negative terms. So remember uh, on the earlier chart, we've seen the number of people or the number of negative comments expressed. Now, out of all this, uh, these negative comments, these are some of the terms that people have used. These are some of the terms that people have used. And if you look at it very closely, you will see some of the things that are standing out on the chart. Now, if you look at the first word on the chart, what is it? Arrest. And this word really sums up everything. It summarizes everything. So if something is a scam, what should be done? Arrest should be made. If something is a fraud, what should be done? Arrest should be made. If something is a crime, what should be done? Arrest should be made. So can you see why arrest summarizes everything? So if you look at the chat, there are other things. You can see bad, you see wrong, you can see leave, you see kill, you see guilty, you know? But the word arrest summarizes everything. It sort of encapsulates all the terms here. Now, if you have watched the first part of this video, the number of people talking about arrest was very low. Why? Because most of the alleged and shady dealings at FTX and Alameda had not come to light. So notice something on the graph. What is it? If you look at it very closely, you see pay. And people are people want their money. People want their money back. People want their money back. So the question we should be asking, what is the possibility of getting a cent out of this messy situation? What is the chance? The chance is very close to nothing. It's tangential to zero. It's tangential to zero. I don't know, but I wish people affected well. Now, let us visualize this plot in a different way or uh, some of the things that we've seen here. Let's try to illustrate them. If there is a scam, how does a scam on a nuclear scale look like? On the image you're seeing, how does a scam on a nuclear scale look like? And if, if there is a fraud, if you say, okay, something is falling or dealing is a fraud, you know, how does a fraud on a nuclear level, on a nuclear scale look like? Try to imagine uh, what happened to Hiroshima and Nagasaki, you know? A destruction on a nuclear scale, you know, and that's what happened. The destruction of the kind of things that happen at FTX in on a nuclear scale, nuclear scale. So how does a crime on a nuclear scale look like, you know? It's very catastrophic. Try to imagine thousands or perhaps millions of people, you know, affected by this whole saga you know what is the possibility of these people getting back their money you know you spend uh, your life working for uh, for this money and then suddenly everything just went away in a flash it's not good feeling people are calling for all the perpetrators to be arrested all the pe all the people involved should be arrested Now, this is a tree map. So a tree map is a visualization of data that splits uh, a rectangle into subparts. So the size of each subpart is proportional to the data it represents and is somehow like a pie chart. So if you know how a pie chart looks like, so each proportion uh, or each part 
is proportional to the amount of data. So and this is what is represented here. And if you look at the scale on the bottom, you can see uh, from mild to strong. So if you look at the dominant word here, you can see arrest. <laughs> now, just like we've seen earlier, okay, arrest, arrest for what? You know, you can see all the things that people are talking about here related to the arrest of uh, Sam Bankman Fried and the whole thing that happened at uh, FTX. You can see funds were stolen, uh, the act is criminal, fr fr fraudulent deals, corruption, scam at its finest, scam on a nuclear scale. Now, the question we should be asking, can the Democratic Party help customers to get their money back? Can they? I don't know. I leave that for you to answer in the comment section. Now, this is a word cloud. So a word cloud is a visualization or a word cloud is a visual representation of text in which the words appear bigger and bolder. So the more often they are mentioned. So say, for example, you have a document and you have certain terms uh, repeated uh, again and again. Now, if you do a word cloud of that document, you will see uh, the terms with, freak, with, with high frequency appearing bolder and bolder. Now, a picture is words, a thousand words. So what can you see in this picture? If you look at it very closely, we can spend the whole day discussing this picture. There are a lot of things presented on this picture. So people are talking about prison, people are talking about fraud, people are talking about jail, people are talking about scams, people are talking about crime. All related to what? All related to digital money, all related to crypto. Now, if you look again very closely, you will see the Democratic Party appearing very bold. And what is it telling us? The Democratic Party is being dragged into this mess, into this messy situation. Now, the question that we should be asking, how much was given to the members of the Democratic Party? How much did they collect? <laughs> they might have collected millions and millions of dollars in cash donations. You know, one would hope that, okay, the Democratic Party would be associated with something good, but uh, sadly, no. A situation as messy as this one, they have been dragged into it. A situation as messy as this one, they have been pulled into it. They have been pulled into it. Now, now the question that we should ask further, so what are the topics related to uh, the arrest of Sam Bankman Freed uh, being discussed? So what are people talking about the arrest? You know, like for example, in certain countries, for example, you know, they censor the internet, uh, they control like almost everything said and done on the internet. You know, you can't mention certain things. You can't mention certain things. So if you mention anything on the internet, you know, that does not tell you what, what they've approved, you know, they'll come and arrest you. So how did they do that? How did they do that? You know, they collect people, they, they, they collect people's comments and, you know, analyze them and come up with the, uh, with some kind of model. They model it to see the terms or the topics that people are talking about. So if you mention anything that is prohibited, you know, they'll come and catch you, they'll come and arrest you. So similarly in this situation, I have used a topic modeling technique to extract Top five topics that people are talking about relating, uh, related to the arrest of uh, Sam Bagman Freed. So let's see these topics. So the image that you are currently seeing shows topic distribution and high probability of word in each topic. So if you notice very closely, so on the left hand side of the visualization, so each topic is represented by a bubble. So the larger the bubble, the more prevalent is that topic. So the indices inside the cycle indicates the sorted order by the area, with number one being the highest and number five being the least. Now, the distance between these cycles shows the distance between the topics. So say, for example, if there is any overlap between any of these topics, you will see these cycles overlapping each other. Now, on the right-hand side of um, this chart, you will see the top 30 most relevant terms for the topic you've selected. 
So the topic you've selected is indicated by red. So the blue bar represents the overall time frequency and the red bar indicates uh, the estimated time frequency within the selected topic. So if you see both blue and red bar, it means the time uh, also appears in other topic. So what are people talking about here in this topic? So people are talking about investment, people are talking about investors, people are talking about parents, people are talking about scam, people are talking about stealing. So not notice some of the strong terms. You see money, you see dollar, you see crypto, all in a range of billions and millions. So people invested money into something that was not close to the claim, you know. At the start of FTX, you know, FTX appeared very flashy, very promising, and a lot of people put their hopes in the crypto thing. People had hopes in the whole crypto thing, but uh, FTX was not very close to, uh, to the claim. So the question we should be asking, why would anyone entrust his or her money into the hands of someone who knew very little about how financial risk works? How would someone do that? Now this is topic two. So what are people discussing in this space? So can you see the words on the chart? See criminal, scam, dirty, stealing, corruption, laundering. Now, if you look at the chart very closely, in the midst of all this mess, in the midst of all these negative words, you see Congress, you see Democrats, you see Biden being mentioned, you see Trump, you see Congress, you see government, you see politician. All of them you mentioned here. So why? Did they collect money from FTX? So what did they do exactly? So some are even calling for FBI to be involved. So you can see all the things that people are talking about. So you can see uh, so many things, especially the, uh, the Democratic Party. The whole messy situation is just being thrown at them. So it's been thrown at them. It's not a good thing. Now in this figure, so this is uh, topic three. So in this figure, so people are talking about prison. Now, what kind of jail, what kind of prison? So similar to the ones found in Africa, you know, if, if you've spent like two years in African jail, that two years is equivalent to uh, like five years in Western prison, in Western prison. So I don't know what kind of prison people are talking about here. Now, if you look at the chart very closely, you will see Bahamas being mentioned. So why is Bahamas being mentioned here? So the collapsed company was headquartered there. So you see, most of all these companies just flock into places like Bahamas because places like Bahamas, you know, the regulations there, you know, is maybe not strict, not tight. And most of these companies, you know, they flock there. They flock there. So places like Bahamas, you know, if you see companies flock into all these places, now it could be a red flag, a red flag. It could be a red flag. So all the companies fleeing to these safe heavens like Bahamas with little or no regulation, this could be a red flag. This could be a red flag. So just try to imagine a child running to a family where there is no correction, there's no discipline. How do you think that child would grow? How do you think, you know? How do you think that child would grow? Well, this is what is happening. So most of these companies, they are flocking to all these places. They want to avoid regulation. They want to avoid discipline. They want to avoid fine. They don't want to pay tax. So can you see the end result? Can you see the end result? Now this is topic four. This is topic four. So what are people talking about here? So people are talking about SPF. People are talking about Sam Bachman Fried. 
and people are calling for him to pay the ultimate price. They want SPF to be deleted completely. This is what our people are discussing. Now, if you look at it very closely, you will see uh, some of the terms that we've seen in the first part of this video coming up here again. And what is it? Danny Medoff has been mentioned here. So you remember him? So Danny Medoff uh, operated a company, so he was very good at uh, uh, what he was doing, very good at it. See, he operated a company and so many investors, he attracted so many investors, people uh, invested a huge sum of money into his company. Uh, but at the end of the day, everything went horrible. So the reason why his memory is being invoked here is because of the Ponzi scheme he operated. Because of the Ponzi scheme. He, he, he did it very well. He did it very well. He deceived a lot of people, a lot of people. So many people thought that, oh, it was a legitimate investment. It was legitimate, but uh, sadly it wasn't. It didn't last, it didn't last. He was caught. So you can see why people are calling for the capital punishment here. So people are calling for SBF to be deleted completely. Now, when you see people talking about something of this nature, something of this magnitude, you know, it shows uh, the situation. It shows that the situation is grave. The situation is much more serious here, much more serious. So if you look at this chart very closely, you can spend the whole day discussing this chart. People are talking about so many things here. And if you look at the bottom, you can see uh, Amazon. I don't know why Amazon is being mentioned here. I don't know, I have no idea. Now, the, this is topic five. So what are people talking about here in this topic? So if you look at the chart very closely, you see terms like arrest, you see testify, you see guilty. But there are two terms, there are two striking terms on the chart, if you look at it very closely, two things mentioned. So what are they? You see Caroline, you see girlfriend. So the question we should be asking, so who is Caroline? And who, whose girlfriend was she? So Caroline or Caroline Ellison was the CEO of Alameda Research. So these two companies are very close, they're very interrelated. So FTX and Alameda, Alameda Research. So these two companies are very closely related. Uh, Caroline was the CEO of Alameda Research, a quantitative trading firm affiliated with FTX. So in December 2022, Ellison, she pleaded guilty to two counts of wire fraud. So two counts of conspiracy to commit wire fraud. So can you see where she's been mentioned here? Now, if you look at the chart very closely, you see Congress uh, at the bottom or very close to the tail end of the chart. And what do you think people are mentioning Congress here? What do you think people are mentioning Congress? Why is the name of Congress appearing here? So people want the US Congress to do something about it. But the question we should be asking, the previous charts that we've seen, you see the name of the Democrats, the Democratic Party coming up again and again, appearing bold in some of the messy situation. So the question is, these people have collected huge sums of money in cash donations from the collapse FTX. Now, how can they really scrutinize this situation? How can they help here? If you accept their favor, you saw their liberty. So the liberty for the Democratic Party to really do something about it. Haven't they sold it? They've already sold it. They've already sold it. They've already sold it. If you accept a favor from anyone, you've partly or even completely sold your liberty. And this is what we're seeing here. It's a very, very messy situation. Very messy situation. So in all this chart, you can see the <clears throat> you can see the anger, you can see the frustration, and you can see what people are really talking about. It's a very, very serious situation. If you know uh Ponzi scheme, if you know how it works, you know. The success of anyone in the scheme is the failure of another one in the scheme. So as someone is succeeding, someone is failing. That's how it works. 
That's how it works. If you see a success somewhere, that's a failure somewhere. Definitely, definitely. That's how it works. Somebody getting, for example, $50 as profit, okay? Someone has lost that $50 somewhere. That's how it works. Now, what are the things that we can take away in this analysis? What are the takeaways? What are the takeaways? Now, if you look at uh, the analysis, you see places like Bahamas we mentioned, you know, the company was headquartered in Bahamas, in the Bahamas. So what's so special about the Bahamas? What's so special about the Bahamas? You know, they couldn't set it up in the United States because the regulations, the regulations there was very strict, which is good, which is a good thing. So they flocked to the Bahamas to go and set up their company there. So the question, the question is, why shouldn't we have similar regulation in the Bahamas? Why shouldn't we have very tight regulation all over the globe? And I think maybe it's time for us to call our governments, for them to collaborate, uh, to have a strong collaboration so that all these companies, all these financial firms with little or no regulation, they should be ended. They should be ended. It's not a good thing. You know, most of all these people think that, oh, yeah, they've gotten, uh, they've gotten a way of uh, avoiding uh, fines, avoiding uh, taxes and things like that. Uh, it's not a good thing. It's just like, just like, uh, growing up in a place where there's no discipline, uh, there's no correction. It's not a good thing. So maybe we should press our governments harder for them to collaborate in all this kind of situation. So if there's a strict regulation in the United States, okay, the same kind of regulation should be replicated or should be seen somewhere else. So Bahamas should not be a safe haven for all these companies, should not be a safe haven for all these companies. So a place like Bahamas, a place like the Bahamas without uh, with little or no uh, regulation. So what do you think it is? What do you think it is? It is a poison in a cup of gold. Now, if you like this type of analysis, I encourage you to subscribe, like, and share the video. I will be uh, doing uh, more of this type of analysis. It's not, it's not just only sentiment analysis. I will be doing different type of analysis. So if you like this type of analysis, please like, share and uh, subscribe and with that i'll say thank you for watching and goodbye